Hello folks, Pikmin Bloom, the latest game from Niantic, the creators of Pokemon Go, was released on the App Store today. And because I'm in Australia, it means I got to play it soon after it was announced. So I've spent the last two hours going for a walk and testing it out. And I want to share with you now what you can look forward to, what to expect, and some of my thoughts on it. For those of you who don't know, Pikmin Bloom is another one of those augmented reality go for a walk games, much like Pokemon Go and others that have tried to replicate the success of Pokemon Go, such as the Harry Potter one and the Minecraft one. But those haven't really been able to match the success of the original mainly because they were released and tried to hit the ground running during a pandemic when everybody was staying indoors so unfortunate timing but this being released and the nature of what this game is two years on I think it's a very savvy move and I'll explain at the end why I think this is the perfect time for this to be released. But yes, this is a game about Pikmin, and a lot of people don't know Pikmin, and they're not as famous as Pokemon, but they are wonderful games. I've absolutely loved them since Pikmin 1, and then Pikmin 2, and then Pikmin 3 on the GameCube, on the Wii, on the Wii U, on the Switch, and also on the 3DS as well, there was that spin-off. So when I saw the trailer for this, I was like, ha, huh, this is interesting. You know, there's only five, six, there's only six types of Pikmin. Yes, six. There's only six different types of Pikmin. And so, how can you make a whole world out of that? What's, what's this going to be? And then playing it, I am pleasantly surprised that they haven't tried to clone Pokemon Go. Once you load up the game and you have the introduction to the Pikmin, you are then given some seedlings, little pots of earth with the Pikmin inside that get incubated in your backpack. And the steps that you take feed them to growth. In the core games, they just grow in the earth over time and then you pluck them out, but here it is your kinetic energy that is causing them to flourish. Because this is a tutorial, it's only 10 steps for them to grow, and there you have two red Pikmin. In the core games, you then put them to battle, but because this is meant to be a more relaxing experience, no, you're just looking after them. They find you little bits of fruit and then you can make nectar out of it and you give them the nectar and the sprouts on their head turn from leaves to buds to flowers, much like in the core games. And once they bloom into flowers, you then get to pluck the petals and they get used later on. Then you get to choose your name and your appearance. And what's really nice is that it's not some pre-constructed avatar. You actually get to import your me from your Nintendo account if you link it. So mine just came over, or at least what I consider to still look like me. I have a lot less hair now. Probably should update that. <laughs> There's limited choice on the clothing, all of them feature the motif of the colours of the Pikmin, but I think the impetus isn't on like making an impact as it was in Pokemon Go when you're like, this is me, this is who I stand for, this is me, look at me! It's more of a relaxing jaunt, as we'll come to see. I set all this up in my apartment before I actually went out for a walk, so I looked through some of the features that were available, and going into the shop, you can see there is a sort of pay-to-play experience, but not a pay-to-win. There's not going to be a paywall for you to be hit by. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of coins for you to buy, and they can be quite expensive. The pricing structure seems very similar to the Pokemon Go pricing structure, and these coins can be used to buy slots. So when you put the seedlings in, you have two permanent slots, but as you can see, there's a lot more around the back, and you can buy single-use ones, and so you can raise more Pikmin at the same time. It's the same as getting egg incubators in Pokemon Go. Also, item detectors and petals. Now, those petals do have a good function, the ones that you pluck off the Pikmin's head. When you're out and about and you're walking, you can activate the petals and use them. And what that does is it blooms flowers around you and it paints flowers along the route of your walk. And the idea is to cover the world with flowers. And as beautiful and altruistic as that sounds, it also has a use for you because it boosts the speed that the seedlings grow by a certain amount. The more flowers that you have, the more petals that you have rather, or the different types of petals will increase the boost. And the, the more that you have of them, the longer the boost will last. But now it's time to actually go outside and go for a walk. And here's me getting ready. Yeah, I didn't, I, I, I don't know what to do. Should have probably taken that out. And so you just go for a walk. And the thing is, you were constantly wanting to look at your phone to be like, what do I do? What do I do? But there's not much to do. And that's not a bad thing. It's quite liberating. 
With Pokemon Go, you're there and you're constantly having to check to see if anything's appeared, if what's coming up next, if there's a Pokestop, oh, there's a gym, we're going to do that, we're going to do this, we need this because of this. With Pikmin Bloom, it's very relaxing. You just go for your walk and the things will just activate in time. So the goals that you have to accomplish in order to level up are like do a certain number of steps or raise the certain amount of Pikmin. And of course, you can only raise them by doing a number of steps. So the only thing for you to do is to go for a walk. There are these landmarks as you can see with these giant flowers and the way that they bloom is the amount of flowers that are grown within the radius and you grow the flowers you plant the flowers by using those petals so as you can see I've planted 25 26 25 flowers and that within that catchment of the radius that catches for everybody and then it just helps to bloom they're usually around 1,000 steps each, but I did get a special one for linking my Nintendo account. 10,000 steps, so that was my goal for today. I wanted to raise this Pikmin. I wanted to pluck it out of the ground. I wanted to see what the deal was. So off I went for a walk around Melbourne. There's a really lovely feature of a journal of sorts. And as you're going for your walk, you can just stop and take a picture of something or write a note or anything you want to do and it logs it like a diary it logs it like a sketchbook so here i am taking a picture of this tree i was going through the park i added this tree and then you can uh you know add the date you can add yourself a note there we go first walk out with the pikmin definitely a momentous occasion and then there it's stored in this sort of scrapbook journal of sorts and it really helps to punctuate your day so if you do go past a landmark and you can be like boom i'll take that and even though it doesn't really add anything, it's it's actually quite nice. I am not one to take pictures when I go out walking. I'm just I'll just go for a walk, and I love walking. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy a good walk. I've walked the length of Britain. I've walked from Adelaide to Melbourne. I walk everywhere, but I don't just stop and take pictures of things. But I wanted to with this. I wanted to make this little journal. I wanted to make this little scrapbook, and it was just for my own pleasure. And when I got to the end of the day, and I'd filled it up. So to open it up and look at it was really satisfying. And I had all intentions to give you sort of a scene by scene breakdown of the things that were going on, but the thing is, a lot of it was just going for a walk. I recorded each time that I did go into the app, I would level up, I would have walked a certain amount of steps, or I would have grown a certain amount of Pikmin, and that would have made me level up even further. And when you do level up, you do get new things, you get to increase the size of your squad. So, you know, it puts a limit on the amount of Pikmin that you can have at any one point, because if you're overrun, you have a huge platoon of Pikmin, then you'll be able to just, you know, take advantage of the game and stuff. So it does limit you in that response. It just, you know, keeps you steady as you go through. When I reached level four, I unlocked my first yellow Pikmin. So already the range of colors is starting to increase and gain these badges as well. You get badges attached to your profile and they will increase in rank over time. So that's just a little personal achievement for yourself. You're like, yeah, I managed to do 10,000 steps a day. Brilliant. That's on my back. Boom. There we go. Boom, boom. That's for me. Yes. So whilst incubating this lovely yellow Pikmin, I took this picture of these giant metal flowers. I thought that was quite apt. I hope they enjoyed it. As time goes on, you start to see those free to play limitations creeping in. As I said before, you pluck the petals off the flower pigment's head and that gives you a boost, which is great, but there's a limitation on how many times you can pluck the pigment's head before it needs to rest. Because otherwise you could just keep spamming them with nectar, keep plucking the petals and keep boosting your way all the way to the top level. And then where's the fun in that? No, it puts a little bit of the brakes on. So you have to take your time. Bring these early stages, that's absolutely fine. You're getting through the Pikmin quite quickly. It's only a thousand steps until the next one's grown. You're leveling up quite quickly as well because it's the beginning. So you're getting all the things, you're getting the feel for it. That's me walking by the river, just showing you that I actually was walking, not just shaking my phone or attaching it to the back of a dog or something. As you progress through the levels, you may be thinking, is this all I do? I just go for a walk and plant these flowers and pluck their heads, but other functions become available to you. You gain the ability to send the Pikmin on expeditions. There may be some seedlings on the other side of town or a big piece of fruit that you've passed and you get to send a group of Pikmin to go and collect them on your behalf whilst you're still walking. 
The more you send, the quicker the expedition's done. Much like in the core games, you send six Pikmin to carry a lemon which only needs three, and it's done in half the time. So that becomes a little bit of resource management as you have this squad of Pikmin and you're going, right, I can send two off now for you to do that. I'm gonna send six to grab this. I'm left with this many to walk with. They will gather my fruit because obviously the more you send away, yes, they're gonna get something in the distance, but they won't be able to pick up randomly as you're going along. So you wanna sort of balance that out. I sent a horde to cross the river to get me a green apple and then took this lovely picture of a sculpture. There we go, put that in the journal. So after a little bit more walking, I managed to level up some more and also hit my 10,000 steps in order to grow that special Pikmin that was given to us for linking our Nintendo account. And look what it is, it is a blue Pikmin. We finally have the core three colors from the original games, the red, the yellow, the blue, perfect. But there's something special about it. Look at this. It's wearing a Mario hat. It's a Pikmin with a tiny little Mario hat on its head. Adorable. So now we know there are these special Pikmin and I can see these popping up as limited time events over the year. Make sure you log in to get this seedling and walk 20,000 steps and you can unlock one with a Samus helmet. It's definitely gonna be a way to add some variety and freshness to the gameplay over time. So that's just the briefest of rundowns of what you actually get to do in the game. And now, what do I think about it? I think it's a very good move by Niantic to make a game like this, especially at this time. Pokemon Go, without question, was a success. It drew people from all over the world, people who didn't even play video games, to go out and walk, to go outside, to interact with other people, to visit new places. It was a huge phenomenon. But this isn't a Pokemon Go clone. This isn't go out and do this, do this. There's not much to do. It's meant to reconnect you with the joy of walking. When I'd play Pokemon Go, I'd go to my local park, get to Hyde Park and walk around, but I'd spend so much time constantly looking at my phone going, okay, but right, but wait, oh, something, oh no, okay, no. Oh, yep, yeah, this, and then you're there and you're you're doing this and you're trying to catch it and you're trying to do this and you're spinning and you're throwing the berries and you're, you need a whole spreadsheet to play that game. With this, it seems they've just taken all of that stress out and they've gone, hey, we want you to just go and walk. Just go and walk. And because this is the age of the pandemic, I'm in Melbourne, you can't be mass huddled in shops or around landmarks like Pokemon Go. There needs to be a freedom and exploration. There doesn't need to be anything tying you down to do certain things. It's just go for a walk, plant some flowers. And I found myself just not looking at my phone, which was really good. It's not gonna have the same draw of that competitive nature that Pokemon Go did, but I think it really does have the possibility to have just that calming, relaxing thing that we need right now. To gently nudge people to go back outside and go exploring, but without any definable boundaries or necessities for you to be in a certain place at a certain time. And of course, there's augmented reality. I sat on the bank of the river and managed to capture this video of the Pikmin in their natural habitat. And with the charm of Pikmin and the music playing in the background and the fact that you're walking and planting flowers. Like how beautiful is that? You are actually seeing the flowers planted around you. And it was always gonna be a very risky thing to make a game that requires you to be in public, to be outdoors, in the age of this virus, but I really think Pikmin Bloom has the possibility to grow into something really amazing. And there you go, my friends. I hope that was helpful. I just wanted to share with you my experience and my thoughts. Let me know if you're gonna play this. Let me know if you have played this. And if you are playing it, I don't know if you can add friends on it, but I'm Kazascoot on it. I'm Kazascoot on everything, on TikTok, on Instagram, whatever. So make sure to look for that. Like and subscribe if you enjoy this. Stick around. I'm also doing videos on Pokemon, videos on reviews on games, and there's some really exciting stuff coming up that I'm currently working on, which I'm very, very excited to share. So yes, but for now, my friends, luck and more to you all and catch you next time.